So here we got the 2020 Kona electric, um, just doing the summer tire swap from winter. Get a lot more range now. I got a lot of requests for a better video of the underside. And this is actually with the tires off because I'm doing them right now. So we'll get a better look at the steering components and the knuckle and whatnot. So we're in the front right of the car. There's the strut. Full coil over. Axle back there. It's getting a bit rusty already. This has uh, 19,000 kilometers on it. Uh, these, you got to watch your brakes because, not because you use them too much, but because you don't use them enough so they get rusty really quick. Mine, mine grind a bit, but I mean, I use regen most of the time for braking, so. I mean, they're not horrible. I just, I wouldn't mind cleaning them up on a lathe before each summer. <clears throat> so there's the, uh, there's the knuckle and the, the, these are the bolts for the bearing right there with the Torx end on them. Uh, so yeah, that knuckle is aluminum. So who knows where that'll be in 10 years. Um, yeah, I'll go to the back of the car. Then I'll lift it up some more. The rear brake has the uh, electronic parking brake. Sometimes engages automatically when you park. You can hear it. Um, strut, spring. Back of the caliper. Wheel bearing back here, bolts in. Looks like there's a sensor in it. Might be an ABS sensor. Little linkage for the control arms. No rust yet, but uh, they don't want me to undercoat it, and this is just gonna get pummeled one day, I'm sure. There's the back of the battery. The rear cell goes up into the rear seats. Uh, if you look at a picture of just the battery assembly, it's it's taller right at the back there. It's not that tall all the way through. There's an extra uh, set of cluster of cells on top. This battery should be getting replaced under the new recall, which is pretty awesome. I'm going to try and run this battery as much as I can until I have to replace it. Like they're saying, oh, the date's coming up. You're not going to be able to replace it after so-and-so date. And I'm going to do it a day before that date or something around there. Uh, all that... Copper colored stuff is uh, copper anti-seize, it's not rust. If you don't know any better, which is good to put on the backs of your wheels so they come off easily when you unbolt them, not when you're on the road. So there's the rocker panel pinch weld. I mean, everything's covered pretty good. Like you got this plastic cover here. Feels like plastic, I don't know if it actually is. And whatnot, but I mean, without undercoating, I'm really scared where those are gonna be at too. Looks good for now. Here's the uh, left side front. Any requests of specific spots you want to see, let me know. Uh, I don't have the panel off underneath. I, I already took a video of that. Ooh, ooh, oh, something hit there. I almost kind of want a new panel because it protects quite a bit up there. Wonder what that was. Anyways, I'm gonna lift it up. And yeah, there's the battery. I mean, there's not much to see under here. There really isn't. It's just a cover for a battery. I 
I'll take this panel off again to show you guys what's under there. So, uh, got the panel off. There's the traction motor or something. They call it something like that. Uh, I have heard of, uh, them going bad. I guess, uh, nothing wrong with the actual motor or anything, but I mean, well, there is, but it's, it's the bearings. I guess the bearings in it can't handle the torque it produces, which is kind of funny. I mean, I guess like 294 foot pounds of torque or something, uh, it produces, but yeah, I guess the bearings they put in it can't fully handle it. So people have been getting them replaced under warranty. <laughs> that looks like a drain plug almost. I wonder where that is. Again, I don't know what's going on down here. I know we got the motor, maybe a diff. Diff. I don't know. Like, or is this just a, like a belt, like a CVT that just transfers the the power from here to back there? I don't, I, I don't know. Or to just normal gears, kind of like a diff. Because that doesn't look like a real diff right there. It doesn't look like a, a 90 degree angle diff. Electric steering rack back there. Car's pretty simple. I mean, probably the most complicated part about this car is like the, the really the cooling system because you gotta have the heat pump, you gotta have the AC compressor, you gotta have all that in there to keep the uh, the battery at optimal temperature at all times. So, I mean, that may be the most complicated part of this. Who knows though? This is, uh, I think that's like for the AC compressor or the heat pump. I don't know. Again, I could probably name every part, every main part on a ICE vehicle, but this one, no. I mean, the, the drive, once you hit the axles, everything's the same, really, in my opinion. I, like, I haven't seen a Kona gas up on a lift, but... I would expect it to be very close. You know, different axle length stuff, stuff like that, but generally the same idea. Yeah, it's getting a aluminum corrosion on that, that powder, ooh. Even with the shield, these Canadian winters are just greasy. Um, this, uh, <laughs> people go, oh yeah, aluminum doesn't rust. Oh, oh yeah, well, yeah, it, it oxidizes or whatever way worse in a way than steel like look at that two years old now i guess i guess the uh, oxidization is very stable so as long as it has that layer of oxidization it's not going to get any worse as long as it doesn't get disturbed like when i just brushed it off with my finger if you keep on brushing it off it keeps on coming back and eats away at it worse and worse and then if you get if you have a steel bolt and aluminum uh and the aluminum corrodes or both of them the bolt rusts and the aluminum oxidizes then you just got glue so that's a whole nother story that's what that's what i don't like about wheel these uh bolt-in wheel bearings is uh um the aluminum knuckle bolted to a steel wheel bearing they just the aluminum oxidizes and just glues itself to the steel wheel bearing. So you take the bolts out, it's still on there. And then you have to hit it off with an air hammer. I mean, this is 10 years down the road. This, this one would probably come off pretty easy right now. But uh, you have to hit it off with an air hammer and then it takes half the knuckle with it. Like in, in not half the knuckle, but like it takes chunks out of the knuckle because it's glued to it and it just flakes away like that. So that's, that's always a weird design. What I've noticed about this, uh, after driving this for three or four months, what I've noticed about this car is that it feels like the engineering is a mix between, I know it's Korean, but it's a mix between German and Japanese. I've driven a lot of Japanese cars, I've driven some German cars, and this just feels in between, like with all the things they do and all, all the things they choose to do with their engineering. And I, it's actually a happy medium, I really like it for that. Uh, there's a lot of things I don't like about certain Toyota things. And then there's a lot of things I don't like about some of the like V-Dub, Audi, German things. Uh, one of them I noticed was 
it uh just the 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 beep sound when you hit the fob to unlock and lock your car on a on an older Toyota, I guess. I guess I'm comparing new to old, but uh, it would honk. And this one just goes beep, beep. I mean, all you need is a beep. The honk freaking wakes people up sometimes if you're late at night, early in the morning. So yeah, I think I think I got enough and I've just been blabbering about nothing, nothing really. So I hope you're happy with that. Any specific zoom in shots you want, let me know and I'll grab them next time.